allow me to say this. As someone who practices before the Delhi High Court and the Supreme Court, primarily as my fora of, of, of let's say, core commercial practice and constitutional practice, any number of times, there are brilliant people, I'm using a gentle neutral term just to be closer to Justin Trudeau here. So there are brilliant people who are very open to upfront criticism during the course of arguments. What is not appreciated is a brash tone. Because you see, you may think that you're going after a particular position or a person, but it is an institution at the end of the day because the person's occupying an office. That needs to be respected always. Respect the office. Disagree with the position with basis and observe civility in the way you present it. I would always assume that more often than not, a reasonable person occupying that office will accept it even if they disagree with it. There's a difference. And my experience as someone who's fairly candid, I wouldn't use the word outspoken because it has the tendency of of hinting at recklessness. I'm not reckless. I'm candid with, a, with, with very clear civility inbuilt in the way I present it. Nobody can ever accuse me of crossing the lines of civility unless someone has actually initiated it and it warrants a response left, right and center to stifle that behavior the next time. I have a duty to respond to ensure they don't make, make that mistake again, either with me or anybody else. But if not, pehel mere taraf se kabhi nahi hogi. So I would say that the institution is open to it. You want me to give you an example? I'll give you a very clear example. Ask any lawyer who practices on the constitutional side. The jurisdiction of the judiciary is always one of the primary arguments when certain issues of social policy are involved, like same-sex marriage or anybody else, or anywhere else. I don't think anybody who's presented a jurisdictional argument has ever been told, Aukad Meraho. No. Regardless of them being a senior advocate or not, nobody has said this. And it's not something that is happening because of the transparency induced by live streaming. No, even before that. <laughs> right? Even before that, people have been like that. So I am not going to rubbish or dismiss this institution without any basis or in a summary fashion. I will not. One, because I'm a part of the system. Therefore, I know that if someone like me can survive in that system, it's because the system in some ways still makes it possible. So you have to give room for that. And I am not alone here. So people think I'm a lone warrior, nothing of that sort. There are enough people here. It is only the degree of vocalization that changes from person to person. I'm fairly vocal when it comes to some of these subjects because someone needs to say it. It can't be a murmur all the time. Two, the problem with democratization of every discourse is that every Tom, Dick and Harry comments without knowing what he's talking about. But that is the nature of democracy, what can you do? <laughs> that is the nature of democracy. Because everybody thinks that they have the right to speak, therefore whatever they speak is right. <laughs> that can't be the way it goes on. No, some of the comments, you should just see it. So recently, the, during the course of the same sex arguments, there was a very short, very short mis misunderstanding between one member of the bench and what I said. Very momentary, very, very momentary. Ask any lawyer, it's par for course. It's rose chalta rehta hai. Within 30 seconds, people forget it because you have to move to the next argument. Kisi ko paas ye bed ke, bol diya. Ye reaction dene ka kisi ke paas me time hota hai. You have a thick skin, you proceed to the next issue immediately. That's the professional, okay? You proceed immediately. Hi, 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 you don't sit and cry there. Right? Nobody did anything. Now you go and see some of the YouTube videos on this particular interaction. J. Sai Deepak snubbed by the Supreme Court. <laughs> and you should see the people in the comment section. Are title me usme antar hai. Aisa kuch nahi hua. The people are saying this. Jo pad hai. So what is this? This is clickbait reportage. Right? You just want to sell it. And the other side of the this thing is someone says. J. Sai Deepak takes on the Chief Justice of India. <laughs> what are you saying? What is going on here? There are comments to this, I mean, there are titles to this particular effect. And I should say this on record. The entire bench was so patient, was absolutely respectful, 
no interruption whatsoever during the course of the submissions. Not just for me, I was not given any special treatment by anyone for that matter. Itne sare logon ko sunna hai on such an important issue. You can't let people keep giving pravachan for ends, uh, days together, no? They'll say, come to the point, come to the point, finish quickly. The Indian Supreme Court is way more patient than its counterparts in United States or United Kingdom. And people in the profession will tell you this. Supreme Court of United States sits for only certain months in a year for oral hearings. The rest of the time it is written submissions which see the arguments through, I mean they, they present the arguments through written submissions. So basically what you are asked to do is, 20 minute diya jayega, yahan pe buzzer shiru ho jayega. Aap apne position ki summary de denge and then you will say baaki ya padlo. That's it. You won't walk them through the entire document, read from judgment to judgment, that doesn't happen, that happens only in India. Okay? Particularly if it happens to be the Supreme Court of this country, the Constitutional Court, you cannot use this as a forum for grandstanding. You will need to come to the point, come quickly, because it's not just your matter. Aapke matter mein aapke pehle aur baad mein argue karne wale bhoat sare honge. But aapke alawa bhi itne sare matters hai. And this is a court with lakhs of cases pending still. Right? And across the country you are looking at half, let's say 5 crores at the very least. So therefore I think people, while they can keep clamoring for more transparency, more democratization, some sense of responsibility must come to the public also. Look at the language you have used for uh, members of the bench in your comments. How fair is it? Memes chala rahe, ye sab kar rahe. That's because this is trigger happy behavior which is also induced by the very same social media that empowers your speech. I think the dynamics of respect and the dynamics of sobriety, the dynamics of sophistication have been significantly altered by social media. If anything it has only dumbed it down is my humble opinion. It could be wrong. And gradually it will come to a point where people say perhaps in some subjects it is best to leave it to experts. <laughs> time Because right now our individual egos need massage. Oh, I too need to feel important. I too need to be included. So that ego will be massaged for a while. And when they realize it's going to produce ultra garbage from all sides, then they will say, oh, if everybody gets to say everything and everybody is equally right, what is the direction that we, we are going to take? Then they will say, okay, there needs to be a telescoping of opinion. Listen to everyone, but don't necessarily adhere to everyone, go to the saner voices, the more informed voices. This is not the building of any Varnashrama system within the speech. I am saying that is the law of nature gradually. Voices which are most effective and which actually make sense will start gradually appealing to people who mean well and who understand that sometimes it is best for us to remain silent on subjects where we know nothing. This time aayega.